And I already uh, only um, learned yesterday that I have more time than I expected. Uh, that's why uh, I worked more or less whole night um, to, to actually extend uh, and to make it a real hands-on. Um, so the Teo talk is basically based on um, the last year's Roscon talk uh, and augmented with uh, some, some hands-on. Um, while I provide the motivation, uh, please follow the building in instructions um, given again there on that link. And if you already followed them, um, because they uh, gave them in the morning as well, uh, please update. Um, because I used the whole day uh, to, to provide more examples. Okay, maybe let's restart the video. Um, so what's the basic idea of MTC? Um, so typically you want to, and we have seen that um, in, in Felix talk, for example, uh, you want to execute several tasks in a row. Um, for example, for uh, this task here, you, you want to grasp uh, with one hand, uh, hand over the object uh, to the other one, uh, and then place the object finally. Um, and of course, you can think of a lot of more difficult tasks um, in real world, uh, which all involve yeah, m more or less many subtasks which are heavily typically interrelated to each other. Um, so um, Levi told uh, or framed that term uh, rippling. Um, so a decision in, in one subtask has definitive effects on, on other subtasks and they might not be compatible to each other. Uh, so you, mi you might need to, to try different um, solutions for different top subtasks uh, in order to come up with a final solution which really goes from the very beginning to the very end. And that's the basic goal of, of MTC to solve such kind of problems. Um, so I hope you got the, the link. It's not shown again. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a. Um, that's, you should use this uh, tutorial branch. Isn't it that shown in, in the instructions? Good. Um, so, of course, we, we have the uh, usual um, goals. We want to be modular, customizable, uh, and stuff like that. Um, but what, what actually drove me uh, developing this uh, together with Michael Gerner from, from Hamburg uh, was that the existing pick and place pipeline uh, in MoveIt was kind of really difficult to use and not really extensible. Um, and we also have, um, as, as Felix did as well, uh, multiple arms. We want to use multiple arms for planning. Um, maybe even um, simultaneously, by manual grasping, stuff like this. Uh, and this is really hard to, to achieve with standard move it. Um, and what was also uh, raised a little, <coughs> uh, several times already today is um, to, to improve insight into the planning process. So having really understandable uh, feedback for failure cases. Um, <clears throat> what was raised by um, Christian or Pilz's talk uh, is that we typically want to combine different planners in such huge tasks. So some, some of the subtasks uh, should use Cartesian planner, some others might use um, joint space interpolation simply, and others really do need um, planning, and we do have different planning pipelines available, so we might want to use different planners. Um, and all this should be kind of addressed by MTC. Um, and that's the basic outline of, of the, uh, or the, the basic concepts uh, of MTC. So you arrange your task uh, in a sequence of subtasks, typically, um, and each of those subtasks is essentially a basic um, motion planning task for MoveIt. 
which can be solved independently and comes up with uh, lots of different solutions uh, indicated by these lines. Um, and then what, what exactly this, uh, and then you try to find a full solution from the very beginning to the very end, um, which yeah, complies to, to all your constraints. Um, the, the interface for that is essentially that each of those stages has um, a list of interface states, uh, these red dots. And each of those interface states uh, is essentially um, is essentially a planning scene, a movable planning scene, which describes the whole world at that point in time. Um, and it also includes uh, some properties which you can freely, more or less freely define. Um, so for example, uh, if you want to do bimodal grasping, um, so decide, automatically deciding which um, arm to use for grasping, then you need to somehow remember which actually which arm you decided for grasping uh, in order to do all the other stages. Uh, so this kind of information um, can be stored. And these uh, interface states then are collected in, uh, what's the name of that? I forget. Uh, in these interface state lists, uh, these, these horizontal bars, uh, so each of those stages can have a list, uh, ordered list, a cost ordered list of, of different um, interface states um, and tries to solve um, the, the planning problem for these yeah, input interface states. Um, and of course, because we want to be modular, we want to kind of hierarchically combine different uh, stages, so each of those stage could be another um, um, container which, which contains again uh, a sequence for example or uh, parallel um, stages. Uh, so a sequence is, is more or less clear what, uh, what is done there. Uh, a parallel container uh, shall allow you to plan for different alternatives. Um, and there are two options essentially. Uh, uh, the middle one uh, where you plan for different alternatives directly in parallel and you consider all of them fine. Um, and the other one, uh, the, in the lower, uh, oops, lower picture here, is a kind of fallback me mechanism. So you first try uh, the first stage and if all of these uh, solutions are exhausted, then you only go for the next one. So for example, if you prefer grasping the left hand, um, then you try first all these solutions and, and only if this fails you go for another arm. Uh, and then there's a merger container which allows, uh, as uh, Felix said, um, would be a nice feature, uh, allows you to plan different arms, for, for example left and right, and then you can try to combine them um, and execute them in, in, in parallel of course only if you can actually combine. Um, I have a question. Yep. So, uh, this is the interactive side, obviously. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, this looks a lot like a game of trees. Is this, was this just drawing some sort of inspiration for that, or is it inherently dull? Um, indeed, uh, the, the structure is, is very similar, uh, and I already thought about um, using the same structure kind of um, to, to execute, to, to use behavior tree execution uh, of that. Um, but here we, we can actually already plan. Um, okay, so, so this model that you're just planning um, through stages, do you think how a behavior tree would like? Yeah, all right, cool. I, I, I got you. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's it's different from behavior trees uh, in the sense that uh, you really try co to combine um, different solutions across different stages here. Uh, and a behavior tree always decides, can I do this? If not, then I, I follow the, the, the fallback branch, right? So do you think by your, while doing this, that you're building your behavior tree? Does it have some like, static defined version of standards? Yeah, that okay. probably is possible. Okay, um, 
for developers, uh, there's a um, yeah, more detailed view on, on these uh, interfaces. Uh, actually, it's not only these interface lists per stage, um, but um, yeah, the, these interface states only provide the, the input uh, states for each, uh, um, for each stage. Uh, and if you generate new output states or new planning um, scenes as output, you kind of write them into the input list of the adjacent um, substage. Um, so this is uh, detail, and it gets more complicated if you have indeed containers, um, because, for example, for, for a serial container, you first uh, yeah, find solutions for individual substages here, uh, and only if you finally um, get the, 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 the last link closed, so to say, uh, in, in this whole chain of uh, solutions, uh, then the whole uh, set of possible solutions, uh, and, and there might indeed be multiple, uh, because yeah, we, we might have different branches here, all these solutions uh, which are created new when a link is closed here are kind of lifted now then to the um, external outer level, um, and then the outer level can continue. Uh, so this um, describes roughly the inner workings of, of MTC. Um, then we have uh, different semantically uh, different stage types. So first of all, there are um, so-called generators. Uh, they provide a kind of seed for planning. Uh, so there we start. Uh, then we have propagation stages, uh, which take the input from one side and just plan um, onto the other side. Well, this can go back and forth. Uh, and then we have connectors, which is kind of the classical planning where we have um, uh, an input or a start state and an end state, and we just want to connect them. Um, and this uh, then typically results in this kind of uh, um, planning sequence. So you start out with all these uh, seed states, the generators, uh, which are indicated by these double arrows. Uh, then um, planning can continue uh, with propagators, and finally you need to connect all these uh, small snippets uh, to get your full, uh, your full path. Um, yeah, I guess I can more or less skip this. Maybe let's, let's focus here uh, on the last one, on the connectors. Um, there is the uh, combinatorial explosion. Um, so if you have several inputs and outputs uh, in your interface list, then you kind of want to combine all or consider all these combinations for planning uh, and this is where um, yeah which, which you should try to avoid and or or put uh, most effort into um, looking for good candidates first and um, there's still a lot of room for improvement in, in MTC as we will see later uh, so what do we have already um, of course, we have basic generators. Uh, for example, you can fetch the current state uh, from the move group uh, as a starting point, or you can define your fixed uh, state um, as a, or a fixed pose um, as, as some configuration state. Uh, you can use a Cartesian pose sampler and compute IK to, to do this. Um, and then we have different types of propagators, uh, so relative and, and absolute motion, um, as we have already seen, I guess, yeah, in, in Pill's uh, talk as well. Um, and then you have some, some uh, possibilities to manipulate your planning scene. For example, you want to attach or detach objects. Uh, if you have grasped it, um, you want to maybe modify your collision matrix, uh, for example, Maybe for, for placing uh, an object, you want to um, maybe disable shortly the, the collision with the table so that you maybe do force-based um, um, yeah, placing and, and stuff like this. Yeah, yeah it comes. Uh, so... Uh, let's skip this. Um, 
as I said, we have different uh, planning possibilities. Uh, you can have uh, Cartesian or joint space interpolation and all the different uh, planning pipelines. And now there comes the code. Uh, so if you look at these uh, tutorials or, or the, the um, MTC demo package, uh, uh, which you have in your workspace now, hopefully, uh, you will find uh, a C++ example uh, called Cartesian CPP. And that's essentially snippets from there. Um, so it's rather easy, I think, or I hope, um, to, to set up a task like this. Uh, so you start typically out with uh, getting the current state from the move group because you want to start your planning in the current robot state, of course. Uh, and then, um, yeah, you create your, I have an, or we have a uh, separate layer of abstraction for planners uh, in MTC, which allows you to, to choose between these different planning types, Cartesian, uh, joint space interpolation, or the pipeline planners. Uh, so here we instantiate a KT in planner, um, and then we, we use a move relative uh, stage uh, in order to move um, yeah, relative uh, 20 centimeters along the x direction here. Um, and you, yeah, very similar to, to Pilz's uh, talk, you can specify uh, these relative motions, uh, you can specify these um, directions uh, with respect to any frame you like. Um, and then finally add simply the stage uh, to your task. Um, because we decided initially uh, to use unique pointers here for these stages because they essentially can only be used uh, once and not multiple times. Um, yeah, we, we need to pass all these pointers uh, using standard move, which is uh, maybe a little bit ugly. Um, and there's uh, a long pending um, API change uh, to, to change these unique pointers to uh, shared pointers again. Um, but that's not yet done. Um, so you can have a look into this code uh, and you can launch uh, this stuff uh, using this demo launch, which just brings up um, the environment and the context and an RVIS. Uh, and then you can uh, run this Cartesian demo. So let's do that. So that should be. The RS environment. And then we have uh, the planner. So because that's a simple task here, uh, it, it's not much planning time. You just get this solution immediately. Um, and that's, there's a global uh, panel, so to say, which lists all the different um, planning tasks available in Arbis, uh, which are listed here then, uh, so now it's only one task loaded. And you can um, navigate uh, this task now, to choose different uh, stages here and visualize uh, the solution of them. Um, so we can also choose a single substage and only uh, investigate this one. Um, okay. So uh, besides uh, these linear motions, of course, you can also do um, twist, arbitrary twist motions, uh, uh, relative or arbitrary um, motions to a certain Cartesian goal or a joint space goal. Um, by the way, um, you can arbitrarily combine joint space goals or Cartesian goals with Cartesian or joint space based planners. Um, so if you choose Cartesian space goal, uh, but you want to do you have uh, joint space interpolation, uh, first uses uh, com computer AK in order to um, get appropriate um, choice space configurations and then does the, uh, the, the planning in, in configuration space and vice versa. So you can freely combine um, what is your goal and how you plan to get there. Um, so the, the connect uh, stage, which uh, gets inputs from both sides, so to say, is uh, maybe a little more interesting. Um, because 
yeah, these, these different poses might differ uh, with respect to multiple move groups or multiple planning groups. Um, we are not yet there that we can figure out which groups uh, needs to be considered, uh, but you can specify multiple groups. Uh, so for example, uh, I usually run into the problem of when, when uh, doing pick and place, we typically have both um, the, the arm and the hand moved. Uh, and you can specify here multiple groups, so here it's only one, um, but you can have a whole list of, of different groups uh, listed here, which might use different planners. So you here pass again the Cartesian planner, um, but yeah, di different uh, move groups could, could use different uh, planners. And they then are planned in sequence, first of all, and finally, we try to combine them to merge all these uh, solution trajectories uh, into a single trajectory, which hopefully can be executed um, uh, at once or in parallel then. So you, while approaching, you open your hand. Um, and then, yeah, as a final state here, we choose again uh, the original state, which we fetch initially by uh, this current state stage. And so let's go back maybe to the Arvis example. Um, and here you see the type of the stage again visualized by these arrows. Uh, so the first and the last one are these generator stages fetching um, both the, the input and output um, planning state, so to say, uh, from the current state. So essentially here they are the same. Uh, and then you have these forward propagators here, uh, and because um, then here two arrows uh, point to each other, you need a connector state in order to connect these two uh, states. And uh, if you misconfigure your, your task pipeline, um, you get maybe, um, yeah, you will get a, a, a exception when setting up, uh, which then yeah, typically can be seen also here uh, in these arrows that, that uh, these arrows don't match together. Um, so there was uh, also a request for Python interfaces. Uh, so MTC uh, has an experimental Python interface, uh, which is not yet um, finally merged. That's why you uh, forked my, my own um, uh, yeah, repository fork. Uh, currently, I'm, I'm still using Boost Python, um, but uh, I'm, I'm actually also considering using uh, PyBind 11, uh, which seems to me much, uh, yeah, light, mo much more lightweight. Uh, and yesterday evening, I also ran into several uh, bugs actually in, in Boost Python, um, which is why some of these things don't work actually. Uh, but yeah, let's do this here. Oops. So we can just also start the Python example. Oops. Um, so here now the, the second task was loaded, uh, which corresponds to the Python example. Uh, it's essentially the same uh, trajectory, but as you see here, the rotation is actually missing for some weird reason uh, yeah, in, in Boost Python, um, but it works essentially the same, and the code is very similar. You need to rebuild? I don't know. <laughs> um, that's not so trivial because then um, probably they don't match to each other. No, there's no UI. 
Yeah, indeed. Um, so let's go to the code and just duplicate here. Uh, such a snippet. Let's say move along Z instead. Uh, in world, that's fine. Rebuild. Yeah, connect the special because because yeah, you cannot have two connect uh, stages in, in a row, right? Um, they don't expect input from, from their neighbors, uh, from their siblings, uh, and it doesn't work. Uh, same for two generators. Uh, so that's why uh, it's very simple here for these propagators. Um, uh, let's, let's do this. So here's our third task, which has now the Z motion here as well. X, Y, Z, then turn and go back. Um, hmm? Okay. Can, can you extend this in, at a higher level to integrate it with the PDDL task planner that will sort of generate these different um, generators so and steps? I already thought about um, yeah, how to describe this task uh, in a kind of YAML or whatever text-based description language. Uh, and if we can do so, uh, then it's of course also trivial let's say, <laughs> trivial, uh, to, com to combine this uh, uh, with higher level, um, yeah, PPDL planners, uh, which yeah, generate use this structure uh, of the task. Yeah, I was just thinking um, of, of, of but, Ross, but Ross plan, for instance, that they, you know, doing all this, could be decoupled task planning and then assume that most yeah. can somehow be So sold. typically you want to have a m even more tighter coupling, yeah. all right, between the higher level abstract or symbolic planning and right. this kind of low level planning. Um, and I would argue MTC is not yet made for that. Uh, so currently you, you just lay out your, your task structure, wherever it comes from, maybe from a PPDL planner. Um, but yeah, then it's, it's again, uh, separation of concerns uh, as uh, G's. <laughs> Nicely stated. I, I, yeah, I know, but a, a task plan can generate candidate plans that basically are sold at MTC or basically said no solution exists. And then. Yeah, of course. Can, so you, on you that level, um, yeah. we could combine that, yes. Yeah. Um, Uh, it's minor. One of the stages says rotate over 90 degrees, but it actually rotates over 45 degrees. So I submitted a pull request Is to it? fix that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's uh, dividing by half or for <laughs> a quarter, right? Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, so for the, for the uh, Python interface, actually, that's an, maybe an interesting side note. Uh, I exploited the uh, type conversion capabilities of Boost Python um, to the extreme, so to say, we, so we can directly convert from um, all kinds of ROS messages uh, to the co corresponding C++ types, uh, going through the ROS serialization as an as a, um, intermediate layer. So everything converts first to the uh, ROS serialization string, and then back to the corresponding type. Yeah? Uh, is that an option you can switch as the Python version? Or how do you want to do that? Can you repeat the question to the mic? 
Um, so another option for, for uh, Python in, um, integration would be Swig. Um, I'm, I'm not an expert on that, uh, but as far as I know, you need to um, What about these type conversion things? Uh, that's, that's, I guess, the key question. Because that is, it's, it's not dynamic, but, but you don't need to care about because everything is templated here. Um, yeah, and, and, and Swig, you need to explicitly tell everything, don't you? I haven't used it directly, but I, one of the universities we work with uses it, and the nice thing about it is it converts to Python, and then once you kind of get that worked out, you can easily convert to MATLAB, C Sharp, like you get more or less like three or four different languages. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the big benefits for it, um, is w the way they sold it to use Swig for Python conversion. Okay. You work through all that. So you get a kind of abstract uh, representation layer first, and from there you can um, generate a corresponding wrappers to, to any language? Basically. That's the way they've explained it to me. So it may be an option <laughs> if you wanted to support not only Python, but uh, at the educational level, MATLAB is all. They were interested in the MATLAB support and C-sharp. So actually, I looked uh, a lot into, into different options uh, in the beginning when I um, started yeah, doing this Python wrapper. And um, yeah, Swig and, and some other options looked too strict for me. Uh, so you need to explicitly, uh, that's what was my impression, you have to explicitly specify all the interfaces. Uh, and using Boost Python and, and hopefully with PyBind 11 um, as well, it, it's everything templated. You have, uh, yeah, for free essentially all these, uh, more or less for free, uh, all these type conversions. So when writing your your um, actual wrapper code, you don't need to take care of that. You just register all these conversions once, and then it works kind of magically, uh, or not in some cases. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, the, the uh, next thing is to, to have kind of modular uh, reusable units um, of, of maybe uh, some sequences of planning stages. And what first comes into mind is of course pick and place, uh, but you can think of anything. Um, and yeah, of course you can simply uh, use these containers which are available uh, to, to set up your uh, reusable uh, code snippets. And for pick and place, we actually do have that. And when programming that, um, I essentially noticed that pick and place, uh, as well as grasp and, and release, are essentially very similar. Um, they do the same operations, but in a reverse order. Uh, so for pick, you approach the object, you close your fingers, you lift, and for placing, you kind of unlift, uh, open your fingers, and retract uh, in the same fashion as you approach the object. Um, and that's why pick and place use essentially the ba same base class um, and just reverse the operations. Um, and same for grasp and ungrasp. So we do have these things. Um, and then you might you know, have noticed uh, that we need to specify um, certain Properties, let's go here. Uh, certain properties for, for all these stages. Uh, for example, you need to obviously set the, the move group uh, you want to use for planning for this particular stage. Um, and yeah, some, some other uh, properties might be there as well. And, and typically, um, you want to save um, work uh, by not redoing that all the time. And if you um, put all your stages into a reusable container now, uh, you typically want to inherit these properties maybe from your, from your parent container. Uh, and that's possible as well. Uh, so you have um, property inheritance um, from the parent or from the past in solution. Um, so as I said, if you have this bimodal grasping um, automatically deciding for, for the left or right arm, uh, you need to pass in uh, which arm you, you have uh, decided for uh, somehow 
um, through this solution, and that's uh, possible as well. You essentially uh, have uh, these uh, functions available, configure init from. Um, in the most general form, you just specify uh, from where you want to inherit, from the parent or from the interface, uh, and you can specify any function uh, which can then access at initialization time of, of this specific unit um, or at runtime, uh, so at planning time, um, you can access the full set of properties of this uh, parent unit or of the, um, of the past in solution. And because it's so typical that uh, the um, properties are named the very same, um, we have this configure in it from source and, and uh, same name. Um, what, what's time it is? You are already ready for? Yeah, let's wrap up. Uh, so we do have already a lot of uh, stages available. Um, there's lots of work to do, uh, particularly um, regarding scheduling. Um, so we do have ordering of uh, um, solution candidates uh, by their cost, uh, but we do not yet actually have nice cost functions. Uh, and you have listed some, I guess, uh, in the morning. Um, and the question is uh, how, to, how to integrate them nicely. Uh, so there were some pull requests recently to to add some basic cost functions, or, um, but they are essentially hard-coded uh, currently uh, in the particular stages, so, so we should have a, a set of cost functions which you can pass in a solution um, and then um, yeah, use them or reuse them across several stages, uh, and it's not yet clear which mechanism to use for that. Uh, probably plugins is the best solution because then you can uh, just provide new uh, cost function plugins uh, in the future. And then a qu another open question is what are useful defaults? <laughs> Again, we had a discussion uh, for the different types of stages. Uh, and it's again, not an easy uh, to answer question. Um, there are some more exa advanced examples. Let's uh, have a look at these at least. So finally, oops, what is this? So you can't run them because for this you would need our uh, move it configuration for our robot. Uh, but here we have this kind of bimodal uh, grasping or bimodal pick and place. Uh, so you see essentially uh, that we have this alternatives uh, container here used uh, which plans for both left or right. Uh, in parallel, uh, so you can have a look at the uh, right-hand solutions separately and the left-hand solutions, and they are merged then, and the best one is, is actually proposed uh, for final execution. Um, or, you have also these by menu pick and place, uh, which you have seen in the very beginning, um, yeah, which is just a combination of these reusable containers pick place uh, several times now um, in order to do this. Oops. Yeah, I guess that was it. Some more examples are available uh, in these MTC demos and MTC poor. Um, GitHub repositories, uh, so probably it will be hard for you to, to get them running because you need to uh, have all the um, robot configurations first, uh, but maybe they provide some inspiration how to program your own containers. <laughs>